everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have Flora by Maria Trolle, and I also have my Derwent Color Soft. I have been coloring with these pencils in Flora over the whole entire weekend. They have become a new favorite, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that in this video. If you check the description box down below, you'll find links down there for my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, my email list, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like more information about that, you can find more information below the video. Okay, so I have some pencils sitting off here to the side. These are the colors that I was working with in the page that I was coloring in Maria Trolle's Flora. For some reason, I have been coloring a whole lot in Maria Trolle's coloring books lately. I do wanna share my story behind these pencils. They are very quickly becoming a new favorite. I did do a video on these long ago. It was probably two years ago. I did a little bit of a review and my first impressions. I think I did a blend test and all of the things that I usually do when I do a colored pencil review. Now, after I did that review, I pulled out some coloring books and I started coloring with these and trying them out on different papers in the different coloring books. And I think one of the main ones that I was coloring in was one of the Clara Markova books. So I grabbed the Clara Markova book. This is Fairy Miracles. And the paper in these books is rather smooth. There's not a whole lot of tooth on this paper. So this is a little fairy house that I tested the Derwin Color Soft in. I mean, it looks great. But when I was coloring and laying the colors down, I feel like I wasn't able to get all that extra added depth and dimension and the pop of color that I like to see when I'm coloring. I felt like they just didn't suit my coloring style at the time. Now, this was probably two and a half years ago. It was quite some time ago. It was when I first started my YouTube channel. I know from my video that they worked really, really well on the Spring Hill paper, but way back when I wasn't purchasing a whole lot of PDFs I was coloring a lot more in coloring books, so I really wanted pencils that worked really well in the coloring books that I had. So when you're coloring with your colored pencils, the whole point is to get that feeling of being really relaxed and really enjoying the way your pencils feel when they touch the paper, and I just did not have that feeling. So with that being said, since the pencils had cost so much money, I went and sent them back to Amazon because I I thought, okay, well, if I'm gonna have pencils just sitting around and I'm not gonna use them and they're just not making me happy, there's no need to have spent so much money on pencils that may end up just sitting there. So back to present day. <laughs> I have thought about these pencils a lot since I have gotten so much more familiar with colored pencils over the last probably more than two years. And I really wanted to try these pencils out again. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I probably should have never sent those back. But I had so many pencils already, there was no need for me to get more pencils and just add to what I already have. So I was talking to one of my wonderful subscribers and I was talking to her about my story with the Derwent Color Soft because she had brought it up and she asked me, do you have the Derwent Color Soft? So I explained to her what happened and I was not expecting that a few days later I would have a package arrive at my front door <laughs> And it was the Color Soft pencils. And I have been coloring with them all weekend and I have fallen in love with them, y'all. Like, honestly, truly, I cannot put them down. But this is what they look like. They have sort of like a burgundy brownish barrel and they say Derwent Color Soft on them. And then you have the color, this one is Cranberry, but you have the name of the color and then you have a color number on each one of the pencils. This one is C150. And then of course, as with most of the Derwent pencils, you've got the color dipped tip with this little silver ring here and then this is what the lead of the pencil looks like. Now I have been using these quite a lot and I will tell you that these sharpen 
beautifully in both my Jarlink pencil sharpener and my Doll Worn 33. I love the way that they sharpen. Now they are a softer pencil, but they are not going to be as soft as something like a Prismacolor. Now this is a 72 case and I've got them all laid out in here and they are laid out the way that they came in the package. With my artist grade pencils, I don't generally put those in color family order. I generally like the way that they come when they come to you. So I wanted to get these in their case right away. So immediately when they came in the mail, I took them all out of the tin and I put them into the case. The only different thing that I did do with these is they had the white pencil at the very end and I like my white pencil to be first in my colored pencil sets. So of course I moved that one to the beginning and all the rest are in the order that they initially came in. So these are the colors swatched out that I also did a very, very long time ago. I absolutely love the colors in this set. You do only get 72 colors, but that is plenty of colors to be able to put some color blends together and create beautiful color combinations and complete a page so that it looks absolutely beautiful. And if there's colors that you don't have or you're not seeing on the swatch chart, you can always take two colors, blend them together, and create another color. You could do little tricks like taking a much darker color and applying it over a lighter color to add all that extra depth and dimension and shadows. You can do that with your grays, you can do that with your black, and I don't usually use black, but I'm gonna show you what I did in Flora because I did something that I don't usually do. And I'm gonna show you a comparison and the difference that it made just taking two different colors and blending them together when you don't have a color that you really need. So this is the page in Flora that I've been working on and I have been coloring a whole lot of trees lately. I really am enjoying coloring them for some reason. And it's really therapeutic, the motions that you use with your pencils to create all of that texture and everything. It is so relaxing and I just love doing it. I love putting together different browns with other colors to create color combinations to make my trees look a little bit different. Now this paper in this book does have a bit more tooth than you're gonna find in that Clara Markova book where I had originally tested the pencils out a couple years ago. Now the one thing I wanna talk about on this page is how I chose the colors for the door so that they really stood out off of the tree in the background, but I wanted these to look very brick red. That was the look I wanted for the door and the little windows, and I'm gonna do this window here, but I needed to get the tree in the background done first before I came in and did the window. And then all of these little stick-looking railings around here, and then all around here, that is all gonna be red too. So here's the swatch chart, and looking at the swatch chart, you can see that there are not really any colors that look like a brick red, or at least not what I was imagining in my head, how I wanted the door on the coloring page to look. So like I said, when you have 72 colors, you can blend some colors together to create your own look, use some of the other colors to create more shadows and make colors look deeper and darker. And so that's what I had to do. So originally when I colored the door the first time, I used the deep red thinking that was gonna give me enough of that brick red look, but it didn't so much work out that way. I'm gonna put a picture up here so you could see the before and after, and you can see how I did it one way and then I came back and I fixed it when I didn't like the way that it looked. Originally, I had used the deep red and I thought that I would add some highlights to that by using the bright pink and I used that along with the soft pink. You can see by looking at this picture how that originally turned out. I didn't like the way that it looked at all and so I knew that I had to fix it. So y'all, I did something that I don't normally do and I grabbed my black and I went ahead and grabbed this Loganberry and I used the deep red and I went over the door and I was able to fix it and make it look exactly the way that I wanted it to look. Now, I don't generally use black at all, but I have been having so much fun with these pencils because I grabbed the black, I used it to add a bunch of shadows and a little bit more depth right here where I've got this tree bark laying over 
this tree bark here. Then down here at the bottom, I used more black. And then over here where I wanted to create a little bit more shadow to show that this tree bark was laying behind this one as well. And then all down here underneath for this adorable little porch, but I have black all in and around these windows, the shutters on the door, and then anywhere that I want to add a little bit extra depth and dimension, I'm going to use the black to create all that extra depth and dimension and shadows. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna color just a little bit and I'm gonna show you how many layers I'm able to get down with these pencils because when I originally purchased these pencils, I was frustrated with the fact that I could not get layers down onto the paper. So I'm gonna show you the trick to using these <laughs> because they really have to be used a certain way and I will say they're a lot similar to the way that I use Crayolas to where you have to use a lot of very light light layers to get them to work the best for you and maybe back when I tried them a long time ago it may have been the paper in the book. It may have been the way that I used them. I probably was using a little bit harder pressure expecting to be able to get those layers down there. And a lot of times when you're getting frustrated, you tend to push harder on your pencil. <laughs> At least that's how I feel. You'll have to let me know how you feel about that in the comments below. But when you're getting frustrated and you just want that color to get down on the coloring page, you start pushing harder just naturally. So to color this tree, the colors that I'm using are brown earth, pale peach, and lichen green. And I'll go ahead and show them to you on the swatch chart so you could see what they look like. But here is the brown earth, and then here is the lichen green, and then here is the pale peach. So I'm gonna color a little bit of the tree. Maybe I'll get to color this little window here too. I'm gonna start in and around this area so that I could color in the window so y'all could see how I ended up doing this and creating all that extra added depth and dimension and how I used the black pencil to add all those extra shadows and the look of texture. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here because I want y'all to be able to see how many layers I can actually get down on the paper with these pencils. This is the brown earth, and as you can see, I'm going very, very lightly and holding my pencil at the side. And this is key with these pencils. And I'm pretty sure when I first got these pencils over two years ago, I probably was not doing that. And I really wanted to make this video because it just goes to show you that just because you didn't like a certain colored pencil at one time, you may decide later on that you actually really enjoy them because really it's all about learning how to use your colored pencils. And no one colored pencil is the same. Like for instance, a Prismacolor, it's just going to blend and smush together and they lay down very, very easily and they just automatically blend. But you're not gonna find that that's the case with every single colored pencil. Now I do have my lightest color, this is my Pale Peach. And I'm just going to add some of this down in here and then I'm gonna come back and lay my other color, my mid-tone, right over the top of it. With these pencils, I was able to get enough layers down here to create the look of texture, which I felt like a couple years ago, I was not able to do at all with the way that I was using them. So this is my lichen green. And for this one, I do have a little bit more of a dull tip rather than a sharp tip because I'm going to be using this color to go in a circle motion and blend it in to these other colors, filling in some of the space between each one of these sections. And I just really want you all to be able to see how nicely these pencils perform, especially in this coloring book. But the key is really just using very light pressure. I am layering my colors just to get a really good blend. So really I'm using these quite differently than I would use something like a Prismacolor. I've got tons of Prismacolor tutorials on my channel and like I said, not all pencils are used the same. You'll notice when I use my polychromos or I do polychromos tutorials, I do use those quite differently as well. And I would say that I use those more so like I'm using these. But look how the colors are just blending together using very light, light pressure. And I'm able to continually just lay the colors down. Now, when I had to come back after I had already finished this door and I had to come back and lay more color over the top, I already had quite a few layers down there 
there. And so I wasn't sure that I was going to be successful in being able to get more color down there to fix what I had done. And I was truly amazed when I was able to continually just lay that color down. And if I wanted to, I could still come back and lay more color down on top of what I already have going down here. As long as you use very light layers and just continue to layer the layers right over one another and blend them together really nicely, you will have much success with these and they are really a joy to use. I am absolutely loving them. I sat all weekend and colored with these and it was so relaxing. If I'm being honest, I am enjoying these as much as I do my Prismacolors and you all know how much I absolutely love my Prismacolors and to say that I'm enjoying something as much as I enjoy those is really a big deal for me. So if you're a beginner and you're just learning how to use colored pencils, do know that not every colored pencil is the same. And I don't think it has as much to do with whether or not a pencil is oil-based or wax-based because every pencil has both oil and wax in it. And whether or not a pencil is oil-based or wax-based is generally determined by the ratio of wax versus oil that that pencil contains. And I have some wax pencils that I generally use just like I would my oil-based pencils. These Color Soft pencils are a waxed-based pencil, but like I said, they lay down very differently than my Prismacolors do. And if you're familiar with Prismacolors and you've used Prismacolors quite a lot, you know that they just smush together and they're very easily blendable, but again, they are a much softer pencil. These are soft soft, but they are not as soft as something like a Prismacolor. Prismacolor is probably one of the softest pencils that you can buy. Honestly, there is nothing else that comes close to a Prismacolor and the way that they lay down. They are pretty much in a league of their own, but I really just wanted to make this video because I wanted to show y'all how amazing these pencils are, and I just wanted you to understand that just because you tried a particular pencil a while back and maybe you didn't enjoy them, does not mean that a year or two later or even six months later, you may feel completely different about them. And it's all about matching your pencils to your paper. And so that may have made quite a bit of difference there. It also may have to do with the way that I was using the pencils or the way that I have changed my coloring style over the last couple years. But now they just feel much different when I'm using them. When you're using your colored pencils, you want to feel really relaxed. I mean, that's the whole reason a lot of us color for relaxation and a colored pencil, no matter what one you choose, should bring you joy. how many layers I'm still able to continually come back and just keep on adding. And I still have not filled all the way to the paper, but if you're using much lighter pressure, you can get layer after layer after layer down with these. And so you can see here that I'm able to come back and just continually darken up my darkest color, create all that extra darkness of my shadows and create that bit of texture. using your lightest color and coloring something like a tree where you want to still be able to see a lot of that texture. You don't want to go over it too much and burnish all the colors together because you still do want to be able to see that look of texture. But look how this looks. I'm absolutely loving it. And there is still a lot of space where I can come back and add a lot more color. I've got my brown earth and I'm going to come in here and really darken some of this up and I'm going to follow these lines just to add a lot of that depth and dimension that I wanna see. I have very quickly fallen in love with these. When they arrived at my front door, I was so surprised. I was definitely not expecting <laughs> these to come in the mail and receive them as a gift. So I am so truly thankful for that. I'm trying to get everything colored all here in and around the window and the shutters, just because I'm gonna use black on these shutters. And anytime you're using black, you wanna use that last because 
because you don't want to pull that color into your other colors because once you pull black in, it's really hard to take up. When you're using a black pencil in any colored pencil set, you really want to make sure that you're using it very, very lightly and holding it at the side. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. You can't just go right in with your black pencil, especially when you're just using it to create some shadows. But I'm probably gonna come back and finish going over this after I'm done filming because you can see already how many layers I've been able to get down here with these pencils and I'm still going back and forth and adding more and more layers and the color is still going down and they're blending together beautifully. And really, these are just so much fun to use. But I'm gonna go in here and just add a little bit more depth and increase my shadowed areas just a little bit more. But I just really want you all to see how this color just continues to lay down and darken up. It's truly amazing. But it's probably a combination of the paper in this coloring book. It has quite a bit more tooth. It's got some something for the wax to adhere to and the way that I'm laying the pencils down on the paper which is probably very different than the way that I probably used them two years ago when I was a little bit more inexperienced. I mean I would consider myself more inexperienced but those of you that were watching me two years ago you may say otherwise. <laughs> I don't know but I feel like I've really learned a lot over the last couple years. And you will find that as you continue to color, you will learn a whole lot too. And something that you enjoyed using or didn't enjoy using a couple years before, you may totally change your mind. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and finish that up. I could add a whole lot more layers in here and really darken this up, but I don't wanna take too much time showing you all that because I want to color the shutter and I wanna show you how I use the black. But the colors that I'm using, for the window and the shutters are the blush pink, which is right here. That's gonna give me a little bit of pop, but they're still gonna look rather dark. And then of course my black, and then I have a long berry, and then the deep red which is right here. You've watched my Crayola videos. You know that when I am laying down my Crayolas, I go in very light, light layers. So I use these more so like I use those in that aspect. But when it comes to the lay down, and the way I lay the colors down, if you were watching when I was finishing off some of this tree bark here behind the window, you probably noticed that I was using my darker color first, and that is how I use my pencils when I'm using my polychromos, which are an oil-based pencil. So with these, I generally use the darker color, and then I go backwards. I have found that this works a little bit better. So I have my long berry, and I'm going to lay this down first. Now on this side of the window, I'm going to add a little bit of this color. Then I'm gonna come in with the deep red and fill this area in here. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of the window. And then I'm gonna use this color to come down and line that just a little bit. I think I need a little bit of a sharper lead. <laughs> Okay, so I used my jar link to sharpen that and I've got a nice sharp tip and I want to be able to line this just a little and add a lot of this color right in here at the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the very top and then the same thing on this side. Now the inside of the window is all in here. I think I'm gonna do those in a yellow. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Now over here on the outside of the shutters, I'm gonna use this color and get a couple layers down there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Now I'm going to grab my deep red and I'm gonna pull this color down just a little bit and I'm actually gonna go over it as well and create a blend of these two colors. Like I said, when you can't find the color specifically that you're looking for, you can blend two colors together and it will create another color. So in some cases when you see me using my colored pencils, you won't see me go all the way over my other color and that's because I'm not trying to blend the colors together. I want to be able to see that color in just that color and then I usually will come in with my mid-tone starting right about here and just filling in the space rather than blending the colors together. But in this case, I'm trying to create a very dark brick red. 
So I'm blending the colors together. And that has worked so well for me with these pencils. And that is the one thing I'm really loving about them because when you've got 72 pencils and you don't have all the colors like you do in something like 150 Prisma colors, you have to get a little bit creative. So now I have my blush pink and I'm just going to go over right here and just create a little bit of a pop. And I don't want to lighten up these colors over here. So I'm only going to keep that right in this area and then a little bit here in the center of the window. Then I need to do the same thing where I want to add a little bit of pop here in the outside of the shutters. But you do need to come back a couple times and go over this to really darken them up. But look how that color just goes right down there. These pencils are really pigmented. The color goes right down on the paper and I'm really just absolutely loving these. But you all know anytime I find something I really love, a colored pencil set, a sharpener, anything it is, I've got to make a video and show y'all. But for this one, I thought it was important because I know a lot of people have these pencils and I wanted to share the best way that I've gotten them to work for me and just a few little tips and tricks. But any set of your colored pencils, always pull them out and play with them a little bit and test out different things and see what works best for you. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a couple layers over here before I come back and do the inside of the shutters. I really want to get that color down there and you could see these continue to just layer and blend and the color goes down so nicely and I haven't even come in with the black yet so the black is really going to darken it up but I do want to do the insides first. Now the insides were a little bit trickier. I'm going to start with my lightest color and I do need to sharpen it because you've got little tiny tiny, tiny little slats in here. Okay so this is my blush pink and what I did for the shutters is I just came in with each one of the colors and added it in there just a little bit and then I'm going to come over with the other colors. In this case, I did use my lightest color first, but now instead of going to my mid-tone, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Loganberry, and I'm going to go over these lines and a little bit over this lightest color, and I really want each one of these individual lines to stand out so that they look like they did here on the other shutters, but I'm also placing different colors in a lot of different places so that they do stand out, but I'm making sure that I go in a back and forth motion because I don't want to drag my colors where I don't want them but I do want to use this color to line them and I may come back with the black and line them a little bit more so now I have my deep red and I'm gonna add some of this in here and again I'm just alternating it with where I laid the other colors and then you just need to keep coming back and adding more layers to really darken it up I am trying to leave a little bit of white inside the shutters just so they have a little bit more of a pop like you can see here there's a couple little spaces where I left some of the white showing and I feel like that really helps to give these shutters a little bit of character. So now I have my blush pink again and I'm just going to come in here and add another layer of this. And now I have my black and I'm going to show you exactly what I did with this and exactly how to use it so that you don't lay too much of it down. But right here in the corner I want a little bit of this black just to increase that shadowed area. And I'm only gonna put it on the bottom. I'm not gonna put it on this side. But if you hold your pencil at the side and lay it down this way and use very, very light pressure, you could see how dark that color goes down there. And then I'm gonna turn my coloring book a little bit more because the next thing that I did was I came in here underneath the window and I'm going along the very bottom of the window and I'm going in a circular motion and pulling it down, but I'm doing it very lightly just to add a little bit of extra shadow in there. And then over here, I did the same thing all around the window, but the key is just to hold it very very lightly because in the end you don't want to see black and you don't want this black to be drug into these white areas here too so you have to be really careful so like I said I wanted the inside of my windows to look yellow to look like there was some light coming from the inside of the treehouse outward so when I come back with the yellow, I'm probably not going to go all the way to the top because I have to be very careful not to drag that black into where I'm laying the yellow. So here on top of the shutter, I'm going to do the same thing again, very, very lightly. And then down here on the bottom of the shutter and then along the side. But now let's go ahead and finish off the shutters. So I'm just going to come in here and I am going to add a little bit of this color just in certain places and it's really going to make it stand out. 
See how that makes it stand out? And you can tell by looking at this one, I've got a little black down in here, a very little bit here, some here and over here. And I just did it very, very lightly. Here you can definitely see the black all around the shutter. And I probably added a little bit more in this one. You can see some here and then here at the top of the shutter. But I do wanna come in here and darken this up. Again, I'm going very, very lightly and barely touching it. And another thing you can do is you can make sure your tip of your pencil is really super sharp. <laughs> And what you can do is just hold it at the side at the sharpest point of your pencil and go up and down here and just add a little bit more of a shadow. And then all of these little lines, after you've got your color laid down there, make sure you do it after you're done. You can come in here and go over all of these black lines if you've got a steady enough hand. And that will make all the little lines stand out too. But you definitely wanna make sure you do it after because you don't want to grab your other colors and then the color get blended in where you don't want it because the black is super super dark and then after I come in and add my yellow let's go ahead and do that now so I can show you how I'm gonna do that so I do need a super bright bright yellow because I really want to see that pop of the light from the inside of the fairy house coming outward so this one might be a little too bright but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the acid yellow so I'm gonna grab that one now. Now if I use the acid yellow and I don't think that it's bright enough, I will go to the lemon yellow. Those seem to be the two brightest ones. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some color into each one of these little pieces of the window. And like I said, I've got black here. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't go up too high, but as a general rule, I would, especially if you're a beginner, lay your yellow down first. Always lay your lightest color down first. And then if you're going to use something like black or very dark, dark colors, come in and use those last. That way you don't have the chance of dragging the color into where you don't want it. Because see, now I've got the black up here and I have to be very careful about pulling that color down into the yellow because I definitely don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in an upward motion and pull upward into that color so that I'm not going downward and accidentally pulling the color down. So I'm going to do it on this one and I think I accidentally did get a little bit on there but that's okay. You can't hardly see it. And then I'm going to lay another layer here. But that color does seem to be bright enough and I really like it. So let me go ahead and just finish off these other windows. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing because I've already got a lot of that black in there. And I am leaving a little bit of white on the outside of each one of these and not filling it all the way in. But you wanna get a couple layers of that to really brighten it up. And then what I'm gonna do is I continue the page. I am going to include this yellow in my color palette of the colors that I've already used for this page because I am going to need some colors to really start to brighten this up. But to create a little bit of balance on the page I'm going to use this yellow now in other areas of the page when I come in and do the leaves I'm probably going to grab the yellow and add it to some greens and create a really pretty color combination for these or maybe I'll make them look like fall leaves I don't know yet I don't have a plan yet for the leaves I just really want to get a lot of the rest of this done and the next thing I need to do is come up with a color for this little adorable walkway or porch here. And I think that that's probably gonna be grays, but I need to get a really light gray that's really going to make it pop in certain areas and still be able to create all that texture and everything that we see here that the artist drew in for us. But I'm really excited to finish this one and I've just had so much fun this weekend working on this. But I just really wanted to be able to share my newly discovered love for the Derwent Color Soft. I absolutely love them. But if you have these pencils, I would love for you to share that with me in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on these. But always remember, just because you don't care for a certain colored pencil, it may be an absolute gem for someone else. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I hope that it was helpful to you in some way. I think I shared quite a lot in this video and quite a few tips and tricks while sharing my newly discovered love for these pencils. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.